Good evening and welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All North and South Carolina students, sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers, or CACRO and StriveScan. We thank you for joining us. A few announcements before we get started. You can utilize the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to the presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions taking place through this CACRO StriveScan partnership, so we encourage you to check the full listing on CACRO's website at cacro.org. Lastly, a recording will be made available following the conclusion of the presentation, and it can also be found at CACRO's website at cacro.org. Now, without further ado, I'd like to transfer it over to our presenter so she can begin her session. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone in War Eagle. My name is Lindsay Borden and I am the admissions advisor for Auburn University. I'm gonna share my screen and get started with the presentation I have for you guys this evening. Wonderful. So Auburn University is in the central east part of Alabama and we are about an hour and a half drive from Atlanta, Georgia, so really close to the airport of flying in and out. The city itself is um, a little small, it's on the smaller side for those bigger school atmospheres. Um, but here at Auburn, we've got the great atmosphere that ranks us high in national and public records. Um, so we are ranked among the top of the US News and World Reports for top universities in the US. So if you're interested in coming to Auburn, um, lots of high rankings we've received. We're also an R1 institution. So all of, this is the highest level of doctoral research here at Auburn University. So we really encourage our students to reach out to professors and get involved in those research opportunities early on. We have 12 different colleges and schools on campus that house over 150 different, um, different undergraduate majors. And so if you have your mindset on something or you're not really sure what you're wanting to study in college, we've got lots of options to choose from. We also have an exploratory major that you can major in and declare for um, close to two years. And in that time, you can take classes in a number of different majors and colleges to kind of feel out what your passions are. Some of our bigger colleges on campus that hold the highest representation are going to be the College of Business, the College of Agriculture, the College of Engineering, and the College of Sciences and Mathematics. And, but like you can see, we've got lots of other ones to choose from if you haven't really found your passion in those top four. We also have over 30 different learning communities. What's best about these communities is that we have 20 that are just designated to our freshmen. This year, we have over 30,000 students enrolled and a little over 4,800 are freshmen. And so those 20 communities are dedicated just to those students, making that transition into college can be a little difficult. So we have these communities to kind of break that tension a little bit. Um, they can be based off of interest or major. Our Honors College is a great program to be a part of. Um, you do have to be invited into the program, and so the requirements this year have changed slightly um, due to being test flexible for admissions. So you will receive an invitation from the Honors College once you're accepted into Auburn University if you have a 3.85 weighted GPA um, and a 29 on your ACT or an SAT equivalent. Later in the presentation, I will go over the requirements for the admissions process, um, considering that we're not requ requesting or making it mandatory to submit standardized test scores. And so for those students, you will have a second essay to write for Honors College, um, if invited. So don't worry on those incidences. Um, it is a five round interview process for Honors College as well. Um, so you'll get that invitation for the application once accepted. Our population is listed here. Like I said, over 30,000 students are here at Auburn University. And um, 41% of our students are non-resident. And so I've got the breakdown pie chart there on the right to kind of show you what states are highly represented here in Auburn. Um, I recruit both North and South Carolina. And so we help make up that orange portion there on the pie chart, but a great well-rounded group of students come in each year from all across the country. Our class sizes are something also that students typically are more concerned of. Being a big four-year public institution, um, thinking of class sizes can be a little daunting. And so 
80% of our classes have 40 or less students in them. That's really encouraging um, so that you're able to make those connections with your professors. We have a 20 to one student to faculty ratio. And so in saying that, it's really encouraged that you reach out to your professors, introduce yourselves, um, probe them with questions that you may have before or during classes and they'll be able to make that relationship with you. Now you will have some classes that are 100 plus, but like you can see on the chart, that's very few throughout your years at Auburn University. So you can expect that small classroom community feel. The application process, I'll spend probably more time on this slide just because a lot has changed um, thanks to COVID-19. And so these policies have been changed in effect to that. So we are available either through our website or on the Common App. And if you apply to either of them, the application fee is $50 and we do accept fee waivers. So if you think you may qualify for a fee waiver, just reach out to your school counselors and they will get that information to us. On the application, we do require a writing portion, and that is composed of our four short answer questions. These short answer questions are capped at a hundred word response max. And so I know a hundred words can seem kind of difficult to cram all of your thoughts in. I took the time to write my answers out and I, I did have difficulty um, making sure that I was conducting the right answers for these questions. My biggest tip for you guys is to answer the question at hand and Keep an open mind on what you're writing about. Some of the required documents that we're going to need for admissions processes is the biggest one is the unofficial high school transcript. This is something that you can submit on your own. So we do not require an official transcript until um, you graduate high school once you're accepted. And so this can be a screenshot from a student portal that you have for your high school. Um, it can be a picture of your unofficial transcript that you've sent from your phone and you can upload it that way. So it's a self-report version of your unofficial transcript. You will not, this is a correction here on the first one, you will not have to input your core GPA. Our admissions processing department will do that for you. Um, but you will put in your cumulative weighted GPA. So the highest GPA on your transcript is what we'd like to see. Our middle 50% GPA this year is about a 3.85, a 3.9 in that range there. And um, so just to kind of let you know what our middle 50% is. And then the bottom document here, this is the one that has changed and brought the most attention to you. So this is the supplemental document portion of your application. You'd only have to choose from one of the four listed there on the right. So the first is a graded written assignment. This is something that um, you've written within the last two years, preferably. Nothing more than two pages in length and that it has to be graded. Um, please submit something that has been graded well and written well from you. And we really love to see teacher feedback. So if you've got a great essay that you've written for a class or an AP class, a dual enrollment, anything like that that you feel confident and comfortable in submitting, we'd love to see it. The second option is to submit that standardized test score. So our middle 50% um, ACT score has been between a 25 and a 31 and respectively for the SAT, those ranges are pretty equivalent there. In submitting that, you can self-report. So the same with the unofficial transcript, you can screenshot your score report from the College Board website and upload a picture of that to us. You do not have to request those test scores to be sent directly to us from College Board just yet. The expanded resume is a third option, and it's probably one of the more popular ones in the sense that you're able to list everything that you've done and been a part of in high school. And we want to see things that you've done in and out of the classroom. So if you've been involved in your community, dance teams, athletic teams outside of school, we'd love to see that. But we also wanna see what you've done in school. So if you've been a part of a community in one of your classes or from one of your representative grades, then you're able to put that on there. By expanded, essentially, we just wanna see more detail. It's not necessary to write a paragraph um, for each position that you've been a part of, but just letting us know what your position was, some things that were your responsibility in that position and how long you were in that position for is what we're looking for. Jobs and internships, job shadowing, all of those things can be incorporated as well. And then the final option is an AP or IB score report. So if you've taken AP or IB classes, that final college exam at the end of the year is what you can submit to us. And this is the same as everything else. Self-reporting is all we need. So you can submit as many of those scores that you like. 
um, when thinking of what scores to submit, there isn't like a bare minimum that we're looking for, but we typically award credit to courses that score between a four and a five. So those are your really strong ones. Um, if you have something a little bit lower than that, I would consider looking at one of the other options. We don't have a preference whether you apply on Common App or through our website, and we don't have a preference on what supplemental document you submit for admissions. I always tell my students, that if you have a really strong resume and a slightly below average standardized test score, I'd rather see the resume. So just submit the document that you feel most confident in um, and that represents you best. This is our freshman profile here. It's going to show our averages and our middle 50% scores. So again, they're listed here. And for the SAT, we just do the reading and math only, so we don't need any of the other components. And we do not super score. Unfortunately, Auburn will only take your highest composite score um, within these respective standardized tests if you choose to submit them for admissions. Here is the slot on our admissions deadline. So as you can see, the first one there was September 15th, and that date just recently passed us, but we've got another one coming right around the corner in a couple of weeks. So if submitting your application um, by October 15th, you will have your decision on Auburn's admission status by mid-November. So that would be so great to head out for your Thanksgiving break knowing on Auburn's decision for you. That's our next early action deadline. The one following is December 1st, 2020, and you'll get your answer mid-January. So this is still a great option for students, especially if you're trying to get a test score in or work on a resume or really wanting to take your time in applying to colleges. So there's not a rush. Our early action is non-binding, so you are able to submit this application, um, and if accepted, you do not have to commit to Auburn at that time, run off the bat. December 1st deadline is probably one of the most important ones because that is the last one that makes you scholarship eligible. So I will say that our scholarships, we've got lots of options available, available to our students, lots of eligibility and requirements listed um, that will be going off of the admissions process. And so you do have to apply by that December 1st deadline to remain eligible. However, we do have two other deadlines available for you, which fall under our regular decision deadlines, January 22nd and February 1st. That February 1st is the last deadline that we have for students interested in applying for fall 2021. And um, if you do apply within that January or February deadline though, you will not have the opportunity to apply for scholarships. So definitely keep in mind that December 1st deadline. These are some additional dates that I just like to keep on hand and available for my students. Um, FAFSA is available online October 1st. That's really close and around the corner. And so if you're applying for any departmental or financial need-based scholarships at Auburn University, it is required that you fill this out. So the sooner you fill it out, the better. December 1st deadline is there for scholarship consideration for students should they have completed application file by this date. So you do not have to be accepted, but you do have to have a completed application for us that has been submitted with all materials received. February 1st is the deadline for FAFSA and also for the scholarship application for Auburn. So you may hear us refer to it as awesome. It is the Auburn University Scholarship Opportunity Manager. And you can see why we've shortened it. It is a mouthful, but the application itself is very simple. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. There are a couple of questions on there, but the majority of the application will be pulled from your admissions application. That application will then be sent out to every scholarship that you're eligible for. So there's no need to search for certain scholarships or search for your eligibility. We send it all out for you. March 1st is the financial aid priority deadline. And then enrollment deposit deadline is May 1st. So just some future dates to think about um, to kind of file in the back of your mind and be aware of. Most of our scholarship decisions will be awarded and made known to you guys by March if you've been accepted. And so we tried to have a quick turnaround process for all of you. This is the tuition breakdown. Um, the tuition itself for out-of-state students is $30,240 for the year. The fees are $1,716, so that totals to $1,000, or I'm sorry, $31,956. 
I do encourage you to check out our tuition and fees calculator on our websites, as some colleges and majors do have specific additional fees that they add on to that. But that tuition and fees covers just that basic level of the tuition packages. This does not include housing, um, but we will see some of those prices in the next coming slides. Things to know about scholarships, our process is flexible. So going back to being test flexible this year, we know lots of students have not had the opportunity to take an SAT or an ACT. And if they have, they may not be very confident in that score. And so we've talked with scholarships in the office there and how awarding scholarships are going to be made. We are still offering merit scholarships and it's going off of a holistic review. So they will look at your GPA they will look at the rigorous coursework you've taken in high school. So if you've taken AP or honors or dual enrollment courses, advanced courses, anything like that will be taken into consideration. And then the third document that they will look at for scholarships um, will be the supplemental document that you choose. I will say that whatever document you submit for admissions is the document that they will use for scholarship consideration. So when applying and submitting that supplemental document, be sure to submit your best one. About 60% of our freshmen were awarded a scholarship at Auburn. These can be based off of geographic, academic achievement, financial need, and academic program. At my time at Auburn, I was lucky enough to have enough scholarship money to pay for my tuition, and all of them were academic program related. So they're related to my major and my minor. And um, so if you're not at that 50% ACT score, if you're not that 50% GPA, don't fret, there are lots of opportunities for you to get money from us. The selection, um, typically you're not granted or awarded um, more than one general or departmental scholarship within your freshman year, but the further that you get into your programs, you definitely have the opportunity to receive more. The merit-based scholarships, if awarded, can range from 5,500 a year to 16,000 a year, and they are awarded um, they're renewable, I'm sorry, for four years that are guaranteed. Our award amounts do range from 1500 to 2000 for the year, um, and all of our scholarships stack. So if you were to get a scholarship externally through a community-based organization or just something that you've been a part of um, in your high school, or if you were awarded scholarships through Auburn, we accept all of that money and we'll stack it to give you the greatest financial aid package available. The different financial aid that we have um, ranges from loans to grants and work study programs. And we've got lots of different opportunities for students to get jobs on campus as well. Um, required each year for need-based scholarship consideration, you do have to fill out that FAFSA each and every year. Um, so just to keep that in mind for future information. And then checking out our financial aid website online is gonna give you lots of information on um, if you qualify for the GI Bill, if you have someone in the military, and any other financial aid questions that you have, that website will be your best asset. Campus housing is something I always encourage my freshmen incoming students because it's keeping you right at the center of campus. It's right in the middle of everything. You're tuned in and you get the opportunity to get new roommates. So I've got some of the prices listed here on the right and those are annual. So they're split in half for each semester. We've got everything ranging from your traditional dorm style where you're sharing a room with one other person or something like South Donahue, which is pictured at the top left is that bigger building there. That is going to be more of a suite style. So you can expect your own bedroom um, in, in a more apartment like setting. It's going to be you and three other suite mates where you share a living room and a kitchenette and then there's two bathrooms. So depending on how much space you're wanting or how much privacy would kind of shift on um, which housing option you choose. Our dining plan options are also required for every student, whether you live on or off campus. And we have an on-campus dining minimum of $1,100 a semester. And we also have block meals um, that kind of act as like a swipe for an all-you-can-eat buffet type setting. But those are just additional. Um, that $1,100 is not expected to be all of your meals in a semester, but it will constitute for a lot of them. If you choose to live off campus, which is an option for freshman students, we do not require our freshmen to live on campus. Um, so if you're trying to cut costs in some ways, 
um, living off campus will grant you a lower dining plan. That minimum is $350. That's what I had at my time at Auburn. Um, I typically would run out of it in the middle of the year before fall break or before spring break, but it's still great to have. These block meals can be redeemed at our dining areas that are those all you can eat options. And so those are great ways to kind of go and hang out with friends and just kind of snack on things or midterms and finals week. Those are really popular locations for students to come swipe in for breakfast and hang all the way out to lunch and study. So some options for you there. Um, keep in mind that the dining plans can change prior to your enrollment uh, for fall 2021. So if accepted, keeping in touch with me as your admissions advisor and just staying up to date on that information on the website will help keep everything fluid and transparent. Our Campus and Recreation Wellness Center is pictured there on the top left. This is our state-of-the-art gym and health and wellness facility on campus. We have a hot tub and pool. We've got an eight-mile track, which is up there. I'm sorry, a quarter mile of a track. Um, that's that orange little loop that you see at the top. It runs over the entire facility. We've got eight basketball courts, racquetball courses, We've got rock climbing walls, so lots of things that you can think to do. We've got it here at Auburn. Our intramural and club sports are also housed in this building, and they just got done building some new intramural fields that have never been played on yet. So hopefully we'll get some students out there soon and get these up back and running. The picture right below that is our student-run pharmacy and wellness and medical clinic. So at the med clinic, this was a place that I went to when that cold season comes around. Um, I didn't have a local doctor here in Auburn, so I went to the medical clinic on campus and was able to get all of my needs taken care of. They also have, like I said, that student-run pharmacy, so you can get all medications that you may need or currently have um, filled through that there. The picture on the right is also pretty neat. Um, these are the bikes that we have, the War Eagle bikes, and you can rent them at no charge at all. Um, you see lots of students ride these bikes to and from their classes, especially on rainy days or cold days when you're not wanting to spend too much time outside. You can just swipe your Tiger card, which is essentially your personal college ID, and it will check it out for you. Um, we've got them located all over campus. There are other ways to get across campus as well. Um, we've seen lots of students bring their own bicycles or their skateboards. So lots of ways that Auburn is accessible for you guys. Um, our campus, is a large campus, but it's able to be walked in about 10 to 15 minutes. So very feasible when um, a hot Alabama day. If you had not had the chance to visit Auburn University, we have a couple of virtual options available for you. So with that first orange link, it is aub.ie slash virtual. With that virtual option, you can register for some student panels, um, you can meet with individual colleges and schools. And then my favorite is the virtual tour. If you've not done the 360 tour, that gives you a great idea of what to expect at Auburn. If you have the opportunity to come to campus, we are actually opening more registration dates for official in-person tours um, this coming Monday, September 28th. And so by following that link at the very top, you can register for those um, Monday morning. So we'll have a few dates available in October and fingers crossed we get some for some November. However, a lot of these are very limited in number and in group sizes and um, just due to the different policies that we have on campus. And so downloading the Auburn Guides app will give you a great way to come to campus on your own with friends or family and tour the campus on your own. We do have students on campus taking classes in person so you'll get to kind of see um, a very similar idea of what a typical year would be like. Um, post or pre-pandemic ideas are not going to be seen as much. Um, our groups are a lot smaller, class sizes are a lot smaller, but we do encourage students and families to come and just kind of see what Auburn's are like for yourself. And this is probably the biggest tip I have in all of your college experiences. Um, when applying to colleges is to get in contact with your admissions advisor. And so that's who I am. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to put up my contact information page for you. And from there, you will be able to let me get it up here, write down all of this information or take note of it in this way. Okay, that's still the wrong thing. Here we go. 
Sorry about that. Okay. So this is my contact information right here. Current slide. Perfect. So there we go. It's going to have my email address and my phone number. And it's not working. I'm very sorry. Okay, there we go. Forgive me. Technology is not always my strong suit, but here you see my email address and my phone number. Feel free to contact me at any time of the week, any day. Um, I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. And then that QR code, if you want to scan it with your phone or type in the link at the bottom, that is a way to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me via Zoom or phone call. So if you've got questions or you want to meet with your parents and I to kind of discuss options at Auburn University, I'd be happy to do so. Um, I've got lots of private visits coming up at local high schools in the area, so I hope to see most of you there. Um, but if not, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or concerns that you have in regards to the presentation um, that was delivered tonight. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I, I don't see any questions in the Q&A, um, but if you have any now, this will be a perfect time to submit those. I'd be happy to discuss any majors um, that you have in mind, any questions that you have, so we can go ahead and square that out of the way, if there are any questions at all. All right, I have a question. Um, is there a good engineering program? Auburn um, is one of the top engineering schools in the Southeast, and not only that, but also in the nation. We are very well known for our engineering program, and um, we've got everything from civil to electrical, aerospace, mechanical, software, you name it, we've probably got it. And um, we also have lots of contributors from alumni um, to our engineering programs. We've just built a brand new student program building. And so that's available to check out on that 360 virtual tour. So if you're interested in engineering, definitely I encourage you guys to check that out that way. Okay, this is a great question as well. We live in North Carolina. Any tips for applying from out of state? Absolutely, um, contact me. I would be happy to meet with you on lots of these questions that you may have. There isn't anything specific that I could say to do to stand out. Um, we don't cap our programs, so we're not limiting how many students we can accept from out of state. Um, but like you saw, 41% of our students come from out of state. So we definitely wanna reach out and get more of you guys in. Um, so yeah. No specific tips, but just definitely reach out with any questions or concerns that you may have in that process. The next question is, what is your education major like? This is another one of our programs that is extremely popular. It is a program that you do have to apply to once you've been accepted into Auburn. And um, so we have early childhood education, elementary education, secondary education, physical education, and then we also have special education. So those five programs are really big on Auburn's campus. Um, they are currently in the works of building a new education building, because currently it is housed in the oldest building on campus, it seems like. Um, and so we've got lots of great facilities and programs coming in place for those education majors. So definitely checking that out. I mean, that's a great path to pursue if you are interested in that. And Auburn's got a great school for it. The next question I have is what do the extracurriculars look like right now due to COVID? This is a great question. Um, something that I see in every meeting that I have. Holding events. Um, we've got over 500 different student organizations on campus and they are still trying to be as active as possible with all things considered. Um, I was speaking earlier with a few people about our first football game, which is Saturday and while the typical atmosphere will be different, we won't have tailgating, um, we have opened up the stadium to all of our students um, to be able to come and still see that in a safe and socially distanced environment. So we're trying to keep it as normal as possible, but still health concerns are number one um, priority. 
So we're still having these things going on. It's just in smaller numbers and limiting what we're able to do. Alrighty. Do you have any on-campus tours? Yes, we absolutely do. Um, our campus tours will be available. Well, they're currently available now, but all of the dates are booked. Um, if you do hop on aub.ie forward slash virtual, again, it's aub.ie forward slash virtual, you can scroll down to campus tours and this coming Monday, in four days, you will be able to register for some new dates that we're opening up. So if you're wanting to come to campus officially and have a student-led um, tour with us, definitely check out those dates on Monday. What is Greek life like on campus? Greek life has a really strong, prominent stance on campus. Um, this year with COVID, they were still able to, for the sorority, still have recruitment week like a typical year. A lot of it was virtual, but um, lots of events were still held in place for that. And then throughout the year, we have lots of events that are held um, not just for our Greek Life students, but are put on by the Greek Life community for other students to attend. So we love our Greek Life students and the organizations that they are a part of, and it's a lot of what Auburn is. Let's see. Can I talk about um, the surrounding town. So Auburn, Alabama itself is a little bit of a smaller town. Um, I feel confident in saying that the students make up a lot of the actual population. We have a really quaint and cute downtown right there at the corner of campus. And so if you're familiar with Rolling Tumors Corner being our biggest tradition at Auburn University, and um, we do roll it right there in the town. The town itself is a smaller, like I said, um, it's, it's city town, but it's more rural. Uh, you'll definitely see cows and pastures right there near campus, um, but it's great. It's got that small town feel and great community. Um, you're just surrounded by great community, great alumni that still come and hang out in Auburn on Saturdays or have made Auburn their home for good. And so I have nothing but great things to say about the surrounding town, um, but we're also in a great location for day trips or weekend trips. We're about four hours from the beaches and about four hours from the mountains. Um, and like I said, Atlanta, Georgia is only about an hour and a half. So from there, you can pretty much fly anywhere. Um, just a great central location for lots of things to do. Is there a dance program? And we do have majors for this specifically. And we also have organizations that you can join and be a part of. Um, and so if you're interested in pursuing dance, in college, we've got lots of opportunities for you to do so. And then the last question I have is, what type of engineering equipment is available, especially for aerospace? So I will say, I was a communications major um, at Auburn, and so engineering is outside of all things I am comfortable in talking about. No, um, but we do have lots of great things for engineering here. We have lots of simulation labs, and for aerospace in particular, you have your own building that is housed in the home for all things aerospace engineering. And so lots of great things to do there, lots of great things to experiment with, to join in research opportunities, and lots of great connections to get you those internships and jobs post-graduation. So lots of ways to get involved um, and really flourish in the engineering program. I have another question. Um, how is the pre-med slash biology program at Auburn. So our pre-med track, and um, there's lots of different majors you can choose from, but if you've specifically chosen biology, there are three different biologies to concentrate in. And with all of our pre-professional programs, so we offer a pre-medicine, a pre-dental, and um, pre-physical therapy, pre-optometry, the list kind of goes on and on. And with those pre-professional programs, you not only have your regular academic advisor, but you also have a pre-professional advisor. And so they will help you from the beginning on preparing your application um, for graduate school and for those professional schools. And so that is a heavy portion of our pre-professional programs, which pre-medicine falls into. Um, we also have, with lots of biology, study abroad programs are really big for our pre-med students. And so if you have the chance to study abroad, there is a, um, that's a great way to get your hands right there in the center of what these passions are 
get this on your resume before you even apply for, for those professional programs. So that's a great, great question. Um, study abroad is open to all of our students and it is actually cheaper than out of state tuition. So if it's something you are interested in, I really encourage you to do some research and um, if accepted and, and you come to Auburn, definitely take that opportunity to go out and do those things. We've got about 10 minutes left um, before our session is over. So if you have any last minute questions, I'd be happy to answer them right now. Or if not, I won't keep you any longer. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Again, thank you guys so very much for meeting with me this evening, taking your time out um, to meet with me and Auburn University. And I look forward to seeing your applications. All right. Thank you once again for joining us this evening. Once you close your window, there should be a quick four question survey that will appear. CACRO and StrokeScan would greatly benefit from receiving that feedback. In addition, feel free to sign up for more sessions via the CACRO website at cacro.org and a recording will be made available of this particular session uh, if you wish to refer to it on a later date. And that can also be found at cacro.org. Take care and have a wonderful evening.